and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be filming a Q&A video. I put out a request on my community tab asking if you had any questions related to nail care, nail polish, nail anything. And I got a few really great responses. I also put out a call on Instagram. My personal account is at underscore Amanda Bella. Feel free to follow if you'd like. But I have a second Instagram account called The Manny Fam, which is basically The Manny Family. It's just a group of girls, maybe there's some guys in there, I don't know, who just love nails. Whether they enjoy doing them themselves or getting them done or just appreciate a good mani. That's the little community that I've kind of like cultivated there. So anyway, I put up a question box asking for some questions there and I'm gonna combine them all today and answer them for you now. It is pouring in Connecticut. It's been pouring for like two days now. I could not think of a better time to sit down and film this. I filmed my last YouTube video in this spot, like in the living room. It was way more cozy. The lighting was a little better and I kind of liked it. I think I'm gonna experiment with filming in different places in the house just to mix it up a little bit. So without further ado, let's jump into these questions. Okay, the first question I have here is from Malika. Why does my nail polish always chip? This is probably one of the most frustrating things for most people is chipping nail polish. Like nobody wants to deal with that, but sometimes it's inevitable. Sometimes you just run into a situation where you're going to encourage your nails to chip and that sucks. But a few of my tips for preventing any chipping. One, get a really good top coat. I think a great top coat makes all the difference when it comes to the prevention of chips. I love the INM out the door. It is just an instant fast drying top coat. I also really love the SE gel setter. That one is incredible. I'm a fan of Sesh V, but I think the other options are just as good. And lately I've been really impressed with the Olive and June glossy top coat. It performs very, very well. And I've gotten a solid seven days out of those manicures. So when you use your top coat, make sure you apply a generous coat on top of the color. Always cap the edge of your nail. That's gonna save you a ton of chips. Anytime you're washing dishes, make sure to wear gloves and just be careful when using your hands around the house to clean, cook, whatever it may be. Just be cautious of your fingernails. I have a whole video about nail care on my channel with a bunch of tips about how I prevent chipping. So I'll link that below if you wanna check that out for more. Okay, next question is from Narissa. Which brand should I start owning for a newbie who wants to enter the world of gel? When it comes to at-home gel manicures, I always recommend Gelish. I just personally love Gelish products. I think they are one of the best at-home gel lines on the market. They have a basics kit that comes with everything you need to get started, minus the color and the lamp. I believe you need to purchase the lamp as well. But it has the pH bond, the foundation, the top coat. I think it has the cleansing solution and a remover. I'm not sure if it has a cuticle oil in it or not. I find it to be the most easiest, efficient system, and I really, really do love it. In the near future, though, I do want to branch out and explore some other lines. I have been so devoted to Gelish, but I know there are other good ones out out there as well. But if I had to give my recommendation, I would suggest checking that out. Okay, next question is from Rebecca. How do you know what length is right for your lifestyle and tips to stop breaking? That's a tricky question because everyone's length is gonna be different. Some people cannot stand long nails. Some people cannot stand short nails. So it's really what is most feasible for you. What does your day-to-day -day look like? Are you really hands-on when it comes to what you're doing at work or at home or with the kids? If that's the case, your life may cater more to a shorter nail lifestyle. Personally, I love of short square nails or like slightly rounded edges like squoval. I think they look really clean, classy. You can't go wrong. And more tips to stop breaking. Again, check out that video that I'm linking below, but you just want to be careful. I also find that gel manicures help keep my nails from breaking. A really good base coat that helps strengthen your nails. You guys know I love the nail aid. Ultimate Strength Biotin, or Biotin Ultimate Strength. I've said it so many times, I don't even remember what it's called. But I also like the OPI Nail Envy. Those base coats will really help keep your nails strong and hopefully help keep you from breaking. Next question is from Keza. What is gel overlay and how do you protect your nails from breaking? I should just do a whole video on how to protect your nails from breaking. That's a really good idea because I'll put all of those specific tips in that one video. But gel overlay is one of my favorite little hacks for growing long, strong nails. I actually have a gel overlay on right now. It's basically when you apply one or two coats of gel to your bare nail and then top it with regular nail polish and a regular top coat. So it allows you to have that stronger gel feel while still being able to switch out the color without having to remove the whole thing. I normally just apply two coats of foundation to the nail and then buff the surface so it has a little grit to it and the regular polish sticks better. But some people do a coat of foundation and then a coat of the top coat and that works well as well. But there are also some builders out there now. Gelish has this structure gel building polish which I think is basically a gel overlay in a bottle. It eliminates the DIY portion. I have yet to get it but I really, really wanna try it. Keep an eye out for that soon because I am gonna try to pick that up and review it for my channel. 
let the creativity out. She says, could you please do a video all about keeping your cuticles pushed back and how often you do it, how you do it, do you push them back even if you have nail polish on? I am lost, thanks, I love your channel. Um, yeah, I should do a whole cuticle care video. That's actually a really great idea. I know I've answered cuticle questions here and there, but you can definitely push your cuticles back while you still have polish on. I oil my cuticles and push them back multiple times a day. I'm talking like three to 10 times a day. It really depends, but I attribute like the majority of my nail health to my cuticle oil use. But I will work on that full video for you. That's a really great idea. Okay, next, Buffy. My nail queen, my question is, how can I file short nails so as they grow out, they still look stylish and not in need of a manicure? I mean, it's really just preference. I love shorter square or squoggle nails, but as they begin to grow, I like to round them. I think round nails just look clean and classy. It's my preferred shape, but it's totally up to you. I think as long as you keep them clean, you don't have to keep them manicured. You can truly shape them however you want. Just make sure the top of your nail is smooth. You know, they're not peeling or chipping or breaking. Clean the dirt out from underneath them, maybe scrub regularly, and then just use an oil. I would use a cuticle oil multiple times a day to keep your nails just looking hydrated and healthy, and that's the Sufficient. That is totally sufficient for short nails and then just polish them on special occasions. Next is Liza. Is there a rule about cool and warm tones when it comes to nail polish? Do specific undertones match the skin better? I don't think there's really rules in anything, but there are definitely certain colors and undertones that favor different skin tones. And it really just depends on what your skin tone is. I'm very, very fair, but I do get very tan in the summer. My hands are always so much more pale than the rest of my body, probably because we're constantly washing them. But it really depends on the polish. Like when I'm using reds, I find that reds with blue undertones complement my skin tone better, but that may be the complete opposite for you. I should look into that. I always say do whatever you want and makes you happy. You know, if you love purple nails, but maybe they're not the best match for your skin tone, go for it. But there is a formula to that. And that's something I think would be really fun to dive into. These questions are just helping me build my filming schedule because I'm curious about some of these things and I really want to look into them too. Next up, Kelsey, favorite base and top coat for regular polish not gel. If I had to break it down, my favorite base coat probably would be the Nail Aid Biotin Ultimate Strength. I love it. It's what I usually reach for. Favorite top coat, I'm going to go with INM's Out the Door. It's just so fast drying. It's really affordable. You can purchase it pretty much anywhere. Walmart, Target, Walgreens, CVS, Amazon. It's everywhere and it works very, very well. That is for sure my go-to. If you just want one that is great across the board, I would recommend that. Emma, what is the best way to take photos of your nails? When I take photos, of my nails for my Instagram. My hands always look red and my nails don't look as nice as they would in person. Girl, the struggle is real and I feel you on this. I really do. As someone who takes a lot of pictures of her fingernails, let me tell you it is not as easy as it looks. I have been asked to make this video a few times. There definitely are a few things you can do to make your nails look better, your hands look better, your fingers look better, and a little editing never hurt nobody. Okay, next question is from Bunny. Have you done a base coats video? No, but I should. That's a great idea. I did do a top coats video and I think I might update that because I have a few new favorites to add, but a base coats video could be good. Off the top of my head, I've mentioned it in this video already. The Nail Aid Biotin Ultimate Strength, the Ultimate Strength Biotin, Nail Aid Biotin Ultimate, why can't I think of the order in which it is? But that one and the OPI Nail Envy, two of my favorites. And last one from Lavina. Do you prefer long or short nails for your petty? Do you love black polish on your toes. Um, I prefer short, short, short toenails. Not like super, super short, but pretty short for a few reasons. I think they just look best on my toes, but when they're short, they're also less prone to breaking. I'm less likely to nick them on something and break a toenail. It's really important to try to protect your toenails. You do not want to break a toenail. A lot can happen as a result of that. Toenails often don't grow back the same. You could experience fungus. You could experience some bruising. Your toenail may just never be the same. So I do prefer short. Um, and I don't mind black polish on my toes. Right now I have a really dark burgundy, very similar to the color of this cup. It is Olive and June's SC. I just put up a pedicure video doing a whole like at home luxurious pedicure. It was so good. My toes look amazing. I can't stop looking at them. But anyway, it is a darker color. And yeah, once in a while I will use black on my toes as well. Um, okay, the last set of questions I am pulling from the Instagram. Okay, this is from Tani. Do you ever apply a gel top coat on regular nail polish? No, never done it. I've heard people have done that, so maybe I'll look into it and give it a try, but no, I have not. This is from Kat. If a nail polish would describe you, which would it be? That's a really cool question. I've never been asked that and I've never thought about that. Um, I'm sure there's a nail polish with a fabulous name out there that 
I think would describe me. I don't know what it is. But in terms of color, you guys are probably so sick of hearing this, but it would probably be a mauve. It would probably be... Ooh, how about this? Sally Hansen's Mauveless. It is one of my favorite colors. It just works any time of year. I love the name. I love that line. So maybe that. I don't know. <laughs> that was a really cool question. Okay, Merit. Favorite top coat. How long does a regular manicure last you? So I answered that earlier. SE Gel Setter, INM Out the Door, Sesh V, Olive in June for top coats. They're great. I paint my nails once a week. And at the end of the week, depending on the manicure and what I did that week, it's either totally ready to be replaced or it could still go a little longer. But a regular manicure usually lasts me a good week. It's like a healthy time frame, but it's definitely possible to go longer. Randy and Kathleen, do you or have you done your own gel French manicure? If so, any tips? Ooh, this is a good one. I did my own gel French manicure once, probably like five or six years ago, and it was tricky. It was actually really, really difficult. I find French manicures really hard to do on myself, regardless if they're gel or regular polish. It's just like getting that perfect white line. I would recommend either using that liquid latex tape and kind of mapping out where you want the white line to go. So after you cure the base coat, put that tape on and then paint the gel over it or use some other kind of nail tape to block off that line so you have a really clean edge. Uh, what else? A lot of people actually take a rubber band and place it on their nail and use that to help guide when painting. I think any kind of guide is probably gonna be your best bet. Next, Chris, fave top and base coats for regular polish. I think I covered that. And everything I'm mentioning, I'll be sure to link in the description box below. Okay, another one from Chris. How do you not get under your nails yellow? This is an interesting question because I know that a lot of people struggle with this. My nails have been yellow before and every so often they will tint again, but a good way to prevent this, well, she specifically asked for under your nails, but for on top of your nails, just always use a base coat, especially if you're using reds or any other dark colors. Those are the polishes that are gonna stain your nails. But for underneath your nails, let me see, I feel like I've heard so many good ideas. And I need to look them up again because I don't remember them all. I wanna say one was baking soda. I wanna say one was lemon. I wanna say one was tomato or garlic. I'm gonna revisit this because I don't, I really don't know. Rach for the stars. Where do you get your full size gelish nail polishes? Most of my full-size gelish polishes come from PR. They send me their lines often, which I am so, so grateful for. I always say it, nail mail is the best mail. Nothing makes me happier than a package of nail polish. So the majority of my full-size gelish bottles are from gelish directly. However, they do sell full sizes online. I'll link a few stores below. I believe Beyond Polish does. I always see Walmart has full-size bottles as well as Amazon. But if there's any other sites I can think of, I'll be sure to link those as well. Yamil asks, tips for removing gel polish. Girl, okay, you need the gel remover clips. The Tina Tor gel removal clips from Amazon are a godsend. They work so, 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 so well. Better than anything I've ever used before and it makes me look forward to removing my gel. It used to be such a process. I could not stand removing my gel and soaking them in that acetone bowl. It worked, but I didn't enjoy the process. The clips are amazing. They make it so easy, so clean, so quick, efficient. Cannot recommend them enough. I think the set is like seven, eight or nine dollars. I don't know, but I'll link it below. It is so amazing. You will love it. Get it. They're great. Next, Olivia, how long does it take your nails to grow from short to long? Um, I would say four to five weeks. Like from nubs to this length or a little longer is about four to five weeks. So give yourself a good month if you want to completely transform your hands. It's really, really doable. Ashinor. I hope I said that right. When will there be a nail live? By the way, love your channel. Thank you, I recognize your name. I know you always tune into the lives. I really wanna do another live soon. It's kind of difficult to not only work it into my like life schedule, but work it into my filming schedule and my Manny schedule, especially while I've been doing this like rehab journey, but there will be one soon. Let's see, October, how about this? I promise you there will be one in November, at least one, even if we get together before Thanksgiving. Ooh, that could be a good idea, Thanksgiving Eve. Last year I filmed a Manny with me the night before Thanksgiving and I was like drinking wine by myself and just talking about the holidays and family. It ended up being such a weird random video, but it was so fun. I edited that night and put it up. But maybe this year, since it's not gonna be a big bar night year, we could do Manny's together. I like that. Nails by Tootsie. What's the best way to round your nails? P.S. I love your channel. 
thank you. The best way to round your nails is with a glass file. I'll link a couple of my favorites below. In my last rehab video, or the one before, I forget. I think it was the one before. I showed you specifically how I actually shape them to be round. So I'll be sure to link that below as well so you can check it out. But for reference, um, say this is the nail you wanna work on. You wanna take the file in one direction and file from the edge up towards the middle and then do the same on this side and then just keep doing that and kind of round it at the top and then use a glass file just to smooth it out and perfect the shape. That's what I do, that's what works for me. You do wanna to try to eliminate that back and forth filing. It's so hard to not do, but it really does help prevent your nails from splitting or peeling. But with the glass file, I will go back and forth to make that rounded shape. A, nooch. Is it true that filing down your nails instead of cutting them makes them stronger? I don't know, I don't think so. I've never heard that and I, I don't know why that would be true. If your nails are really long and you want them to be shorter, I say go ahead and cut them. I think cutting is less damaging than filing, especially if you have a good nail trimmer. Filing can be really difficult when trying to remove length. Um, and I'm not sure why it would make them stronger, but that's an interesting thought. Okay, the very last question is from Shayna. How to paint your nails without getting it on your cuticles? This is like the age old question and something that I still am not very good at, but I recommend one, make sure that you have enough time to paint your nails. Like don't paint your nails when you're in a rush or you're trying to get out the door. Really make sure you set aside a good block of time, not only so that you can paint them, but so you have time to clean them up and you have time to let them dry. Two, I guess this kind of goes with the last one, but take your time with each nail. You don't need to paint to the edge. Try to leave a little bit of space between your cuticle and the polish. The liquid latex tape is actually pretty helpful. I just find it to be another step and I like to work with as least steps as possible. But if you paint that around the edge of your nail, even if it gets a little bit in the cuticle, that's totally okay because you can paint your polish over it and then remove that at the end and it leaves a nice clean line. Another tip, these are all kind of clean up tips because getting polish in or on your cuticles is kind of inevitable. As you're painting your nails, clean up as you go. I like to leave my thumbs for last. Like I paint my thumbs at the very, very end so I can use them on each hand to clean up. I also leave a little orange stick to help clean up as I go, especially if I flood the cuticle. If I flood the cuticle, I wanna to try to clean it up immediately. And then at the very end, my latest obsession is using a cleanup brush. Like I mentioned, I'm not a fan of extra steps, but this is one that's really, really, really helpful. So a little cleanup brush dipped in acetone is going to remove any polish very quickly that's on your finger or cuticle in an area that you don't want. So even if like your brush strokes are a little crooked on your nail, you can take that brush dipped in a little bit of acetone, not too much, you don't wanna flood your nail bed with it, but just so that it's damp, and kind of smooth it around your nail to get a really, really clean line. Cleanup brushes are amazing. I've been using the Olive and June one just because they had sent it to me and it's been right at my Manny station and I love it. It works fabulous. So I'll link that below as well. All right, so that is it for all of the questions you guys sent in. Thank you so much for participating. I hope that some of these answers were helpful and maybe what you were looking for. If nothing else, you guys gave me some really great video ideas. I definitely need to film a base coat video, a how to take a picture of your nails video, a cuticle care video, Video. There were just a ton of very helpful suggestions, so thank you for that. But that's it for this one. I have so many things in the pipeline. There's a lot coming up on this channel, and we're just getting started. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment below if you have any tips or helpful information to maybe help answer some of these questions. I know there were a few that I couldn't provide the most helpful answers, and maybe you guys know. That would be awesome. And that's it for today. I will see you guys in the next one. Ow.